How you doing? My name's Don Price, and I'm lucky enough to oversee Greenland. I've been with the city 28 years. So how many people have been on our moonlight strolls? I live on Greenland. There you go. No room. Nobody can anything. So we know where to come now. So uh, I was at Greenwood Cemetery. If you, those who don't know, it's it's a 120 acre cemetery right in the heart of downtown Orlando. And if you don't ever, if you haven't got a chance to come on our moon, we do them once a month, and we actually just throw little bits of history at you. That's all we do. And every month it changes, only because I'm not that bright. So we'll just keep flipping it around. And so as we go through today, we're going to try to cover Orlando as best we can. It is kind of interactive. You won't see a PowerPoint. You won't see any of that. So if you have any questions, stop me at any time. Or expand. If I hit something that you might know about, we can all learn a little more and keep expanding. All right? You have some handouts in front of you. These are just little fun facts about Orlando. The first little fun fact is that Orlando was incorporated in 1875. It's been here a long time. Do you know when we became Orlando? The year we were named Orlando. 1857. So if you're dyslexic, we're your town. All right. So in 1857, we became Orlando. Now we were named Orlando, but we weren't a city. What were we before Orlando? Jernigan. Jernigan. Okay. Now there's only two places in Orlando that the Jernigan name is actually upheld. That we have the name. You might know those two places in Orlando. One's the arena, the new arena. There's a restaurant called Journey's in, in there. Plus there's a small road in Paramore named Journey. Those are about the only places you will see in Orlando that are Journey. Now, this is what we were named prior to Orlando. Why don't you think we have anything in Orlando that's named Journey? It's not the Phillips bought it. No. <laughs> Journey like to kill people. Oh. He was a murderer. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, Jernigan, this is back in the good old days. We had Fort Gatlin down the road, and Orlando was a, was a mail post. So, it was named Jernigan. He was actually, a, you know, the mail area there. But Jernigan <sighs> killed a guy, mm. went to jail, escaped, ended up in Texas, stayed in Texas for a while. He actually came back. He's buried in Orlando Vista. Anybody here familiar with Orlando Vista? Yeah. How many people are here first generation? Orlando. Yeah. Well, you're new. <laughs> Second generation? Swine. Okay. Right. You'll learn nothing. <laughs> You'll walk out of here going, man, I should have went to that other class. <laughs> now, Jernigan's, Jernigan's buried in Orla Vista Cemetery. Okay? So, Orla Vista is right outside of Orlando by Lee and Rick's, you know, when I say Lee and Rick's Oyster Ball. And so, but Jernigan, what happened is, is Judge Spear decided, you know, hey, we can no longer be named after, you know, a, a murderer. So he changed this to Orlando. Now there's about 15 stories on how we became Orlando. We have Orlando's grave. We have Orlando with Jernigan. We have a lot there. My story is more romantic, because that's me, I'm a romantic guy. Uh, if you go back and you look at Judge Spear, and some of his writings that he wrote at the time. Orlando had an opera house back in the 1850s. Right downtown was an opera house. But we were more of a frontier. The main area of Central Florida was where? You know? Sanford. Great. Mellonville. It was named Mellonville back then. And so that was where everything came in. All your ports came through the river. All that came into Orlando. So Orlando was really a frontier. But we did have an opera house. Now, Judge Spear wrote a letter back to his family and said remind, Orlando reminded him of the forest of the heart. Okay? <laughs> if I know what that is. Oh, gosh. It's a play written by Shakespeare. Shakespeare play. It's a Shakespeare play, as you like it. Who was the lead character in that? Orlando was the lead character in that play. Now, also... Now, this came a little later, but who was the heroine in the play? Rosalind. <laughs> so we have that. Now, Rosalind wasn't the original name of that street. The original name of Rosalind was West Street. Now, I'm going to blow your mind here. West Street, really simple. 
because it was the west boundary of Summerlin's land. That's all it was. <laughs> Our streets are simple. <laughs> South Street South. was the south border of the city. But people always come and they go, how come, how, how come South Street runs you know, east and west? Because it was just the south boundary of the city. The Bumbies, the Robinsons and all. We do have one street named after a president. Washington. And then Obama. 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 Parkway. Oh, Jefferson. Yeah. Yeah. Jefferson was actually named after Thomas Jefferson. And we'll get that to a minute too, on why we have a Jefferson in Orlando. But so in 1857 we became Orlando. In 1875 we were incorporated. We became a city. Now, how many people do you think voted to become a city that year? One. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-two. Ah. 22 people voted. We became a city with 22 votes. Wow. How many people were eligible to vote? 22. Well, 85. Oh. 85 people were eligible to vote in Orlando yeah. in, in 1875. So we became a city with 22 votes. What was your eligibility in 1875 to be able to vote? A white male. White, mm -hmm. white male property owner. There you go. White male property owner is what your, your status was back then. 1894, it's your next one there. The first azaleas were brought to Orlando. Now the first azaleas were actually at 124 West America Street, were the very first azaleas in Orlando. Right there at Lake Lucerne. Right now, if we go to it today, we can see it, but it's an office building. We tore down the house, became an office building. Now, there are 12 varieties of azaleas were placed right there in Lake Lucerne by a gentleman by the name of Picton Warlow. Now, I believe Picton Warlow, the Fourth is still in town, uh, but Picton Warlow actually went to England, found these beautiful plants, went back to city council, and said, "Hey, let's let's plant these in Orlando. They're beautiful." And they said, "Great, Picton, it's your job." He says, "You know what? I'm a high-powered attorney in town. I don't have time." So what happened is they came on and they got a gentleman by the name of Colonel Dixon that oversaw all the azalea plantings. Dixon is Elliot Park. His name in his honor. Mm -hmm. Now, it's really cool when you come to his epitaph. It, at Greenwood, his epitaph, we all know what that is? Yeah. It's your last sentence on earth, is all it is. So make it good. Mine's going to be holding my beer and watch this. So, what, what happened is Colonel Dixon set up all these plantings in Orlando, went door to door, set up all these azaleas, and he got the park named after him. But his epitaph, says, brought the first azaleas to Orlando. Huh. Mm. I'd say picked a more of did. But he was the one that was very instrumental. So your very first azaleas in Orlando were right there at Lake Ivanhoe. Or Lake Lucerne, I'm sorry. Uh, 1908, your next one down. We received our motto, the city beautiful. Anybody have any clue whether that's good or bad English? If you're in this class, I've already said probably if you're an English teacher, I'm probably driving you crazy right now. Was it in English first? No, if you think it's incorrect English, it should be the beautiful city, mm -hmm. if you're following the standards. But we became the, you know, the city beautiful. That was actually named in 1908 by Miss Jessie Branch. Miss Jessie Branch owned a bookstore in town, Branch's Books. So when she did it, there was a contest that year. The city held a contest to change our motto. What was our motto before 1908? No. Speak up. We can have. No. No longer named Jernigan. Nope. It was the <laughs> phenomenal city. We were the phenomenal city up to 1907. All of a sudden, we were no longer phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> we needed something to change. So what happened is they had a contest, and we became the city beautiful that year. Now, what's unique about that is the city beautiful Miss Branch owned the bookstore. She was also a poet. So it becomes very poetic at that point, that here, you know, we are the city beautiful. Now, another thing that year, number two. Can I have one thing, Don? Yes, sir. So what was one of the runner-up names? Mm. <laughs> number two was the City of Lakes. Number three was the Magic City. Um, this is in 1908. Way before. <laughs> now, this is before the Magic Kingdom, yeah. before the Orlando Magic, before any of that. So it was actually, number three that year was the Magic City. Now, the, uh, her husband, William Branch, also won a contest that, well, a couple years later. The biggest developer in Orlando around the turn of the century was William Rhodes. 
was the biggest developer in Orlando. Rose. 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 Rose was the biggest developer in Orlando. He joined the contest when you're actually her husband, William Branch, joined the contest to name his newest subdivision in Orlando. And he won it, and he got $25 for it. <laughs> Anybody know what that was? And he got $25 for it. Rose Rose. Mm. Park. Mm. Rose Arden. He named Rose Arden. Now again, Forest of Arden from Shakespeare. Ah. All right, mm -hmm. Orlando. So Rose Arden is based off the Forest of Arden, which is Shakespeare's play where Orlando was the, the hero. So we're making a connection here, right? Yeah. I have ADD so bad. <laughs> By the time we're done, with it all come together. <laughs> so what he did is he, really, he got $25 for that. Do you know that Jesse Branch got zero for giving us the City Beautiful? She got nothing for that. Now, I don't know if y'all remember back, it was probably in the 80s. They had another contest. It wasn't sponsored by the city, but to get a new motto for the city. Do you remember that? I do. Oh, Orlando won. Yeah. What? Yeah. Remember that? A lot of people forget. Yeah, there was a big contest, and oh, Orlando won that one. It lasted about six months. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it didn't last long. Yeah. yeah. In 1910, we got our first set of swans in Orlando. Charles Lord brought them back from England. Now, most people don't realize that there was a white set and a black set of swans that came back. Now, do you know the swans weren't originally at Lake Eola? They were at Lake Lucerne. Lake Lucerne was the common area. You know, they had a swimming area at Lake Lucerne. Uh, I think they call it Huey's Peninsula. Is where you know, people hang out. If you go up the bridge to, from the OUC, to go up on the 408, there's that little peninsula down there. That was a big bathing area for Orlando. That's where everybody went. So what it was is Charles Lord brought these swans and put them in Lake Lucerne because that was the common area. Lake Eola, most of that was privately held. It was privately held land. So they couldn't get along, so one of the sets were moved to Eola, and then the other set stayed at Lucerne. Now, a lot of people don't realize that the meanest swan was Billy. You know that he's stuffed at the History Center right now? <laughs> so if you go to the History Center, you can see Billy. Billy was the mean swan. And he's actually stuffed right now. And he's on the split at the History Center. 1919. Circus came to town for the first time. Barnum and Bailey Circus came to Orlando for the very first time. You know, Orlando almost banned it. When, the, when, the, when the, all of the, the elephants came through and the carts came through and all that, they did over $5,000 worth of damage to city streets when the circus came through that year. So just imagine what we did. You look so intent back there. I like that. <laughs> uh, so in 1921, first Piggly Wiggly came to town. It's one of my favorite stories. I dig the pig. Yeah. <laughs> Came to Orlando. Did I know where it was? Hmm. Now, if we go back and look at what Orlando was, the first Piggly Wiggly is where the Sunbank sits today. Hmm. 210, 210 South Orange Avenue was the first Piggly Wiggly store. Hmm. And I actually think I got, uh, when it opened, 12 eggs, 39 cents. You buy a dozen eggs for 39 cents. You could get uh, 10 pounds of sugar. 69 cents was their opening day special. And a pound of butter, 49 cents. That was their ad that day of coming in. The, uh, uh, 1925, first duplex built in Orlando. Anybody know where that is? Or where it was, no longer there. Yeah, the duplex, two stories or? Side by side, side, side by split side. housing. 1925 was the spur first split housing in Orlando. It was right at Anderson and Robinson. But the 408 took it out when it came through. It said they on the other corner. But that was the first duplex. That started something in Orlando. And we had a lot of duplexes coming in when the base was here. There was a lot of the duplexes for that. Uh, 1940, first drive-in theater came into Orlando. Anybody know where that was? Come on. What? Here's a clue. No. OBT and Gore. Oh, well, OBT and Gore was the first. Anybody know what the first movie played there was? 
<laughs> Vivacious lady. <laughs> Ginger Rogers and James Stewart. It was the very first movie played, driving movie played in Orlando. It was a vivacious lady. Y'all Google that. Please. <laughs> the, uh, ah, 1940. First Publix Market opened in Orlando. Wow. The building's still there. College Park? Nope. No. No. Thornton Hill. Thornton Park. Thornton Park. Thornton Park. Thornton Park. Thornton Park. It's Dexter's. It's Dexter's. Dexter's of Thornton Park was the very first Publix in Orlando. Huh. Right there. And the logo's still on the floor, I understand. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So the very first Publix is right there at Thornton Park in Orlando. Uh, 1948, Orlando had its very first bank robbery. Whoa. So there was no old Western movies for us. So in 1948, we had our first bank robbery. Anybody know where it was? Dang. Right downtown. Of course. No. $91,000 was stolen. Wow. wow. $91,000. It's now Valencia, downtown campus. Oh. It's the first national bank, right on the corner of Church and Orange. It was the first bank robbery ever made. No. 1952. Statue of Liberty, the replica, came into Orlando. Anybody know where that is? Yeah, like right at the end of Orange Avenue, right by Lake, I- Lake uh, Ivanhoe. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know that wasn't the first thing. The first? Yeah, the first was the orange. There was an orange there. A big orange set right there. Was there a couple and, of them? Hmm? Was there a couple of them? Hmm? There was a big one and smaller one. What as big as that one on Lee Road? Remember the one that used to be at Lee Road in I-4? Yeah. 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 But, they, uh, but there used to be a big orange there. And Lloyd Gar decided that you know we needed something different, so the Statue of Liberty came in. So there's actually a Statue of Liberty monument right there on Lake, Lake uh, Ivanhoe <coughs> next time you go back through there. Now, another neat thing about Lloyd Gar is you know he was claimed to have the first bicycle in Orlando? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Where's this guy get this stuff? <laughs> but he had the first bicycle in Orlando. It was one of those Columbia high wheels. Oh, cool. You know, with the big wheel in the front and all. <laughs> and uh, I've actually seen pictures of him riding through the town. You know, I'd love to do that, but I got no balance. Oh, uh, 53. Charlie Morgan opened the nation's very first drive in department store. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad it didn't catch on. <laughs> you actually drove into it. That was actually in the 1100 block of West Church Street in the Paramore District. They actually had a huge uh, department store there that you could drive your car through and shop as you went through. (laughs) 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 Very first uh, driving pharmacy or drive through pharmacy in this area. Anybody remember that? It was it on Gore? No. It was on Orange, near where Florida Hospital is now. Oh. It was owned by Maynard Evans. Mm-hmm. Maynard Evans High School. Mm-hmm. Now, most people, I see, I'm, I'm, I'm squirreling, as they say, I'm going this direction. But Maynard Evans High School, we all familiar with that? Mm-hmm. All right, Maynard Evans High School was named after a big Orlando family, the Evans. Uh, now, Maynard Evans was a pharmacist, that's what he was. Had three brothers, all of them were pharmacists. So they owned the San Juan Pharmacy, they owned Rex Evans Pharmacy, they owned Evans Pharmacy. Uh, all of them were pharmacists. Maynard Evans was on the school board the year he died. So that's why Maynard Evans is named in his honor. But he wasn't an educator. And what was unique is about four or five years ago, the Sentinel wrote this big editorial on about changing the name of Evans High School. They wanted to change it give the area a brand new identity. And in this editorial, they wrote, not many people remember his contributions as a principal and an educator. <laughs> I called the editor. I said, you don't even remember. He was neither. He was a pharmacist. So even the Sentinel wrote about his contributions as an educator and a principal. So, but he was, so he's buried. Now he is buried at Greenwood Cemetery, about 50 feet from William R. Boone. Boone High School, Norman, named his honor. 
Mm-hmm. Anybody here go to Boone? Mm-hmm. No? God, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> I live across from it. There you go. My husband went there. Okay. All my boys. Now, Boone High School, just named after William R. Boone. William R. Boone was principal of Orlando High School. 31 years. Now, the, the city had decided, or the county at that point, decided that we no longer, we were growing our, out of one high school, Orlando High School. We needed two. So Orlando built two high schools. So they had North High School, South High School. In the South, we're, we keep it simple. North and South High School. So, <laughs> we do. The Angebelt Hotel, mm-hmm. built by J.F. Ange. Ange built the hotel. Ange built the hotel. <laughs> We're in the south. <laughs> so what happened? So what happened is in 31 years, William R. Boone was principal of Orlando High School. From the last day of school of Orlando High School, last day of existence, he had a massive heart attack and died. The last day of school, on the last day of existence of the high school that he was in charge of. And that was which one? Orlando High School. Not so, North or South. No, it was Orlando because the next year, North and South was opening. So they were closing Orlando High School. So he died. So they named the high school after North after him. Yes, so I met a guy who said that he wanted to name the South High School after Boone before he died. Correct. And he went to the school board and they got a petition and all that kind of stuff. And they said, no, we don't name it after living people. That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> so after he died, it was like, okay, now we name yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and so they named it after And then they needed, since they named it after the new school after him, they needed that second school to be named. Because you did, now you just can't, you know, now it's too generic. So what they did is they went around and that year Maynard Evans died. <laughs> so they were like, okay, we're going to name it Maynard Evans. And they're like, no, no. Edgewood. Oh. Ah. So Maynard Evans became number three that year. <clears throat> but there was a big controversy that Edgewater High School could have been Maynard Evans High School that year. But Edgewater was the number two high school that they had there in Orlando. Tell, tell the story about Boone Sue. Boone Sue? He is actually buried in the suit that the students bought him for graduation. For graduation. He didn't own a suit. So the students and the faculty and all got together and pitched in money and bought this man a suit. He's buried in that same suit his his, his students and faculty bought for him. That's the only suit he owned. Because I believe most people refer to him as the coach. Because he he was, he was, although he was a principal, they, he was, they refer to him as a coach. So I'm picturing a guy that dressed very casual and, and so on in school. Uh, God, I squirreled really bad on that one. Uh, 1953, telephones in Orlando. Do you know that Bell Telephone had 31,265 telephone lines in Orlando in 1953? Sounds kind of amazing. I don't even know what it is now because most people probably don't have lines anymore. But the amazing fact is, is that in 1952, the year before, they only had 5,000 lines. Wow. So in one year time, they increased 25,000 lines in one year time. Uh, in 1957, the Lake Eola Clown. You know, there's two fountains at Lake Eola. Yeah. See, I got confused looks. I like yeah. that. <laughs> one's, in the, in the one's in the middle. The it's the Centennial the Fountain. Mm-hmm. The other one is at the southwest corner. That's right. The, uh, the original, or the one in the middle, the Centennial Fountain, we call it. Uh, some people refer to it as the UFO Fountain. <laughs> uh, but it's our icon. I mean, it's on a city seal. It's on my paycheck. It's on a lot of things. Is is this this fountain? Does anybody know the actual name of that fountain? It's got a name. It's the Linton E. Allen Memorial Fountain. Is the name of that fountain. Now, Lenny Allen, he was a, a president of a bank in town, and he was very instrumental on getting it, you know, put in. So they named it after. But now, another neat thing is that's the Centennial Fountain. It was put in in 1957. 
A lot of people confuse it as a hundred years of Orlando becoming a city. It wasn't. It was a hundred years of being named Orlando. Because mm -hmm. remember, we were just named in 57. We weren't a city yet. What year would you become a city? 75. See? Dyslexia. <laughs> Works every time. Uh, 1962. First woman, with Beth Johnson, first woman elected to the U.S. Senate from the state of Florida. Came from Orlando. She's got a park named after her in Orlando. Mm. Anybody know where that park is? Lake Ivanhoe. Correct. <laughs> Remember when they had all those uh, hippie rallies not long ago? And they all camped out there by the chamber? That was at the Beth Johnson Park. What was those rallies about? Occupy. Occupy. The hippie rallies. <laughs> now, they, uh, that was done at Beth Johnson Park. And so most people don't realize that we named a park after her in Orlando. 1963. Sears opened in Orlando. The biggest store in the South opened. Mm -hmm. Where did it open? Or no? No. Fashion Square. It was the biggest store they ever built in the South. Oh, the biggest Sears. What was that? Wasn't there a department store in Orange? It was at J.C. Penney. There was a few on. There was uh, Ivy's. No, there was Ivy's, Penny's. Uh, who no, was the suit? Penny. Yeah. Who was the suit place? Uh, who was there? I don't know. I don't wear suits. Uh, but it was 173,000 square feet a year. It was the biggest one they ever did. It was right there. Uh, 65. First leg of I-4 was open. 1965. Most people don't realize it opened right through Orlando. First leg of I-4. It went from Rio Grande, was the start of it, to Lee Road. Oh, no. That was the first leg of I-4. A couple things neat about I-4. First person to ever receive a speeding ticket on I-4. Mayor Bob Carr. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually in the books. The very first ticket ever issued on I-4 was to Mayor Bob Carr. <laughs> Mayor Bob Carr was sitting in his office at City Hall, decided he was going to take that shortcut home, jumped up on I-4 right before it was open. Um. Wasn't really open to the public yet. Jumped right on that thing, got pulled over, written a ticket. So he goes down in history as the first person to ever receive a ticket on I-4. <laughs> now, another unique thing about I-4, just because I'm squirreling here, do you know that most interstates connect states? Except I-4. I-4 is one of the only interstates in the country that doesn't connect to another state. Do you know how they got funding for that? I've seen the plan. They actually, the engineers built a bridge going through the Gulf of Mexico into Texas. <laughs> That's how they got funded. Oh my goodness. No one, it would never work. <clears throat> But yeah, that's how they got all that. But that's one of the only interstates in the nation that don't connect to another state. It was supposed to be what? Gulf of Mexico? To Texas. They're going to run a bridge. <laughs> Would have never worked. But we got fun. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, you're talking about Bob Carr. When was he the mayor? Orlando? Mm -hmm. 60s. He died in 1967. We'll go to that. We'll scroll to that. <laughs> Three mayors have died in office in Orlando. Three mayors. First mayor to die in office. Mayor Paramore. Mayor Paramore died in office in 1902. Very first mayor to die in office. Now, he also holds the record as being the most elected mayor in Orlando's history. He was elected <coughs> six terms in office. Now, he doesn't hold the tenure. Because back then there were one year terms. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, so he was elected six times, but he only was in office six years. <coughs> now, so Mayor Paramore was number one. Number two was Mayor Sperry. Now, we're going to go back to that second fountain at Lake Eola. The Sperry fountain. The Sperry fountain. <clears throat> now, at Lake Eola, by the Publix, there, the, the new Publix, mm -hmm. there's a birdbath fountain there. Okay. That is a replica. All right. Now, that birdbath fountain is the Sperry Fountain. Now, Mayor Sperry owned the land that that fountain sat on. He donated it to the city. 
The foundry that built the fountain, Mayor Sperry had interest in. He paid for that fountain to be built. <laughs> now he paid for that fountain to be built. He donated the land to put it on. There's your other fountain. Now there's a plaque on that fountain that dedicates it to Mayor Sperry. Sperry Fountain. Do you know that he paid for that too? <laughs> but unique how he paid for that. After he had died, he still got a paycheck. His wife sent it back to the city and said he died. He didn't earn it. The city didn't know what to do with it. So they took it and bought the plaque. <laughs> and sits on his phone. So that whole thing was funded by him. Now the original is sitting in a warehouse right now. We're trying to get it. <laughs> Where is it located though? The Sperry Fountain? Uh, it's uh, Lake Eola. Yeah. Right there by the Publix. All going around. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Right by the Publix, right across. It's, you can see it right next to the road. Uh, beautiful fountain, but it is a replica uh, of it. Now, it comes back to the last mayor to die in office, Mayor Bob Carter. He died in office. Uh, he died in 1967. Mayor Langford finished his term for him. Now, Mayor Langford couldn't beat him in office. Mayor Langford ran against him a few times. Uh, but, so, Mayor Bob Carr was the last one to die in 1967. Uh, the Bob Carr Auditorium is named in his honor uh, on that end. Uh, any other questions we got going on? We learned, yes, sir. Can you, can you tell me something about that Statue of Liberty? Did you know anything about that? Too? Yeah, Lloyd Gar put it in. Uh, it was. You must have just showed up. Didn't you? I just covered twenty minutes on that. <laughs> no, he did not. He did not. <laughs> The Statue of Liberty Monument was actually put at Lake Eola, and it was actually it's actually on your list there. Uh, it's number what? 1952. There you go. 1952. It was put at Lake Eola. Uh, Lloyd Gar put it in. It was replaced an orange. It was a big orange ball that sat there, found. And so that replica has been there. It's actually a big project from the Boy Scouts and all that too. John, wasn't that, part of, that was part of a national program. Correct. The Boy Scouts were putting these Statue of Liberties all over the country. Correct. Correct. So yeah, yeah was one of the first ones. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Why did you stop at 1974 here? Oh, well, we haven't I, got there yet. Oh no, I could keep going. <laughs> I could keep going. Uh, I just stopped in 1974 only because for the history, you know that's. You know, my memories start going after that. Because <laughs> I'm only like 22. Is that yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, well, you go ahead. Well, just connection with the Church Street. I mm -hmm. knew that when I came in 2000, it was shot. Mm -hmm. So so it held up for about 20, 25 years. What, Church Street? Yeah, that mm -hmm. whole complex. That whole complex. That whole complex. It's been, I mean, in the 70s, when it went through its renovation, uh, Bob Snow was very instrumental on bringing that back, and now it's actually becoming vibrant again. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, a lot of people you know, don't realize it was pretty seedy right there at one time in the 70s. And then when Bob Snow so came in, Eola. yeah, oh yeah, well, Lake Eola uh, was really seedy, and the city came through and removed all the plants, the undergrowth and all that at one point, put a better, what they call white way around it, so it was lit up. But uh, you know, when it comes to like Church Street, you know, uh, it was a pioneer. That whole area. There's some great photos you can find online where Bumby. We all know Bumby. You know, Bumby Avenue was named in his honor. Most people don't realize that he was the hardware man in town. Bumby Hardware was right on Church Street. It was right there next to the train tracks. So in the you know the turn of the century, you could go to Bumby Hardware. And you can get all your nails and your leather goods and all that for building because we're a frontier right there next to the train. Now today you can go to Bumby Hardware and you can get a meal served by a drag queen. Hamburger Mary's. Hamburger Mary's is Bumby Hardware. It used to be the old Emporium. That's right. <laughs> Buffalo Bob's Emporium. Yeah. Yeah. Or Buffalo Bill's Emporium. But yeah, so I mean that building still exists in Orlando with the Bumbies. 
So, you know, he was the pioneer that came through in Orlando at the time, and now that area is still there. Did you have a question? Yeah, um, um, Fort Gallon. Where was the fort actually? Where was the fort? It depends on who you ask. Um, <laughs> it's actually on, on Gatlin Avenue. There's a marker there. Oh, is it? Yeah, there's a marker. You go down Gatlin Avenue uh, near the old sonar base. Yeah. You know? Okay. Uh, Lake, they call it Deep Lake now? Is that what they call it? Used to be Lake Jim Mary. Yeah. Do you know that? We really don't Mary? know the actual location of the actual outline of the fort. Correct. They, they've never fully found it, but they, they have it speculated, and there's a marker there. And it's like right under, supposedly right under the parking lot. A lot of stuff does that. We just mm -hmm. paint it right over. And I have another question. Mm -hmm. The little cemetery that's on the corner of Fern Creek in Michigan, it's like a, I guess it's like a Potter's Field. Mm -hmm. There's no grave markers there. Mm -hmm. is, what is the history? That's run by the county. Yeah. It is a pauper. Yeah. It's a cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, if you die in Orange County with no money, now that was closed. They used one out near UCF now. There's actually a paupers near UCF now. Mm -hmm. But at Orange Hill Cemetery, mm -hmm. if you died and you had no money, they cremated you. Sure. They put you in a tube with nine other people, numbered, and they buried you in the ground. And then if your family ever came back and claimed you, then they'd pull you out of the tube and turn you over to the family. But it is a potter's field out there. Uh, Orlando never had a pauper cemetery. Uh, Orlando paid for its burials, even for its paupers. Mm -hmm. if you lived in the city limits. Uh, if if someone died in Orlando without money, the city paid five dollars to carry hand. Carry hand came and buried you at Greenwood, five dollars. So the city always paid for the burials. So there was no paupers field draw in the city. And even today, we don't offer pauper services at Greenwood. Uh, county still does it. County still does all of the pauper services mm -hmm. in Orlando. Yes, ma'am. Um, earlier, earlier you said when you first moved to Orlando, you were in the Dr. Phillips area, but you said that you wouldn't want to say that you're from that area. Um, around, like, what year was that, and what, how did it change? Like, it well, changed. Everything was, everything back in the time in the Orlando area, Dr. Phillips was very agricultural. It was orange groves. Uh, Windermere was dirt roads. Still got a lot of the dirt roads, but they didn't have the houses. They had that now. I mean, there were small houses. Uh, this changes started coming through with Disney. I would say it was a major change. Uh, I can remember as a kid wanting to move to Pine Hills because the rich people lived in Pine Hills. Mm -hmm. You know, you had you had a Belk Lindsay's, you had a drive-in, you had a Skaggs Albertsons, you had all that in Pine Hills because Pine Hills was built for Mark Marietta and Disney. That whole community. So when you start looking at the changes, everything in Orlando went through a change. Pine Hills went through a change. Dr. Phillips now, everybody brags about being from Dr. Phillips. Uh, look at Rosemont. When I first started with the city in 1987, I was 10 years old, okay? So I started with the city. I started with the city, and all I wanted to do was get enough money to move to Rosemont. That's what I wanted to do, and I did. My wife got a job here at the city. My couple paychecks in. I had enough deposit down. I got an apartment in Rosemont. I thought I had arrived. All right? Metro West came in. Changed the whole dynamics of Rosemont. Because now you had a newer golf course community. You had a newer everything. So all of a sudden you started seeing this change come around. Uh, and so it, it all changes. You know, things, you know, they change. They never stay the same. Yes, sir. Can you speak uh, more to the history of Paramore, the community? History of Paramore? Sure. Uh, for what I know about it, yeah. uh, it was named after uh, Captain Paramore, uh, Mayor Paramore, longest serving mayor in Orlando's history. Uh, the community itself was very vibrant. It was on the west side of downtown. Uh, most people think of Paramore as being the first black community in Orlando. It wasn't. It was actually Jonestown was the first. Jonestown actually sits where Greenwood Cemetery sits today. So if you go down Anderson Street and on the new section of Greenwood, on the Anderson Street side, that was Jonestown. It was the first community in Orlando. Uh, and as, as, as the, the community started to, to die off, Paramore went and became more vibrant at that. But, you know, Paramore community, and I'm, I'm by no means a historian of Paramore, but, I mean, it's the... the 
the community has so much history back there mm -hmm. with the Wells Built Museum, Dr. Wells. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most, I mean, if you look at that, have anybody been to the Wells Built Museum? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. the, the performers that have stayed there, that all with you can look at the mm -hmm. thing. It's it's amazing That's because piece. they couldn't be, it couldn't be put up anywhere else. Correct. 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 Orlando was under Jim Crow laws until right around. <clears throat> 1967. Wow, so mm -hmm. grateful. In Orlando, but if you go back and you read Orlando's history, and you read the minutes of Orlando, which y'all hear, she's doing a count. <laughs> We're a little behind. Think about it. Now, 1967, we can actually find an official overturning of Jim Crow law in Orlando. We can actually find it. And the schools weren't integrated until 68. <clears throat> yeah, something like that. But we did it quietly. We overturned Jim Crow laws in Orlando very, very quietly. Why do you think we did that? Because it was late. Yeah, Civil Rights Act of 1964 mm -hmm. made it illegal. Mm -hmm. All right? But Orlando is a little behind. A little behind. You know, we're, we're farther south down. You know, we're going to keep quiet. <laughs> you know? So what happened is in 1967, the city kind of abolished Jim Crow. And they did it quietly. City Council said all burials at Greenwood Cemetery are now open to integration. Mm. All what? Burials at Greenwood. All oh, burials. See, we were segregated. The same thing. Greenwood has three segregated sections at the cemetery. So what happened is a family came in to Greenwood, and they said, hey, we're going to have a funeral next week. And Greenwood said, oh. <laughs> Segregated section sold out. Can't help you. Family said, whoa, whoa, time out. Have you not watched the news? <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden, the NAACP got involved. A lot of groups got involved. Orlando couldn't come out and say, hey, we've been breaking the law. Because there's funding involved. There's a lot. So all of a sudden, the city just said, hey, Greenwood's now open to everybody. Integrate so at that point, it kind of was the way of saying everybody at this point is a, but that's all, that's actually on the book. She'll have time to read it. All the minutes are online. Y'all are here on a Saturday morning. You got time to read it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you commented earlier that there was a developer named Rose. William Rose. Did he do the Eola Rose subdivision, which is now Thornton Park? Do you have any history of that specifically? I, I live in that area and they put in, I've heard Wives tale or urban myth about the mayor doing beautification around the 20s and planted all these big, what are now big laurel oak trees. Oh yeah, well that was yeah, well there was a you know there was the whole beautification program that you know they planted these great beautiful water oaks. Yeah, that we lost in 2004 because they were mature. Yeah, mine came down in '95. Mm -hmm. During the hurricanes, helped them. Yeah, you know all the laurel oaks that came down. That was a huge Orlando planting, and it was done. It was done by the mayor. At the time, Swedish so beautification core. Oh, so it was Mayor Gordon. Mm -hmm. like yeah. mm -hmm. He was instrumental in the beautification. And so all these tree lined streets were part of that program. They haven't replanted a lot of them. We actually have. I mean, at Greenwood, we've replanted almost oh, 300, well, but at 300 trees. But now we don't plant water oaks anymore. Right. And we don't plant a lot. So you don't see that immediate spam effect that you had before. The trees are there. I, I believe Orlando, after the hurricane, over 10,000 10, trees? trees. Over 10,000 trees have been planted, but you don't notice that, the impact yet, because they're only 10 feet tall. Mm -hmm. so, yes, ma'am. Um, I moved, I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty close to the hire. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I just moved there about five months ago. When I was doing some research of the area, one of the things that stuck out was that it is Orlando's oldest residential neighborhood. It is like I said, I believe everything I read on the web. So. I, I always say that we're I always say that we're Orlando's most exclusive gated community. Just green. We are we are the most exclusive gated community in Orlando. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I wouldn't go with that uh, only because if you go a little higher up, or well, it's close to you. But if you go higher up, like Honeymoon Row, uh, those houses are right around Lake Cherokee. Okay. Uh, I mean, that dates all the way back to the beginning. You still have some of those mansions there today. Oh, it's uh, beautiful. Yeah, it's, okay. I mean, it's the uh, Lake Cherokee was originally what? Lake Minnie. 
thing that he was like to. But you know, so it's these little tidbits of, of Orlando's history that, that are kind of fun, because you can't, because uh, I even wrote some other ones down. Uh, 1908, we became the city of Butte. Who was mayor in 1908? We can just make this up. <laughs> Paramore? Paramore died. Paramore died in 1902. Oh, no. So Mayor Jewell became, par became mayor in 1908. Now, Mayor Jewell was, he was a solicitor in town. What that is? Mayor. He's an attorney. He was an attorney in town. So, when he became mayor, one of the first things he did was he passed an ordinance. An ordinance. And said you can no longer tie your horses up to the awnings in downtown. Because <laughs> what would happen is your horses would spook, rip your awnings off your building. Guess who was one of the first persons to ever violate that ordinance? <laughs> Mayor Jewell himself. <laughs> now, Mayor Jewell was arrested. He had to appear the next morning in mayor's court. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time we can find in Orlando's history that the mayor had to appear in front of himself in mayor's court. <laughs> he found himself guilty. Uh, he did. He found himself guilty, and he fined himself one dollar. <laughs> so he gave himself a dollar fine for violating this ordinance. Uh, another one, because we're running out of time. Uh, now, Dr. Preston. Dr. Preston Orlando, second surgeon that came to Orlando. Dr. Preston. I would try to pronounce his name, but I can't. It's like Okawaya, Okachia. <laughs> Who am I? OP. OP Preston. Now, Dr. Preston. Yes, ma'am. What was the name of the uh, bank that was wrong? First National. First National. It's now Orlando. Valencia. It's got a church in Orange. Still there today. Where it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I'm glad I didn't have to make that up a second time. <laughs> uh, but Mayor Jewell, I'm not aware we're at Preston now. Dr. Preston, he practiced on a lake in Orlando. Anybody know where a surgeon office was? Okay. Now, Dr. Preston was a surgeon, practiced on a lake. His wife's name was Jenny. And she was his jewel. That's where the name Jenny Jewel comes from. Dr. Preston's wife in Orlando. Uh, so Dr. Preston practiced Jenny Jewel. Now Deep Lake, which we talked about, where the old Marine or the Navy sonar base is, we're near Fort Gatlin or Gatlin area. What was it before it was Deep Lake? <clears throat> lake Jim Mary was the name of the lake. The Randolph family, Mary was his Jim. That's all that comes from Mary Randolph was Jim Mary. Uh, another couple little things I thought. George Newell's home on Lake Cherokee. We're just talking about Lake Cherokee. It was actually torn down in 1975. It was built in 1885. That's what started historic preservation in Orlando. Huh. Is the tearing down of that house on Lake Cherokee. Uh, other things I wrote down. Oh, in 1910, George Russell had a theme park. I'm like, I don't know. Called Joyland. <laughs> there was actually a, a, a theme park or a, a water park on Lake Ivanhoe in 1910 called Joyland. And I actually remember not long ago on one of the Facebook sites or website where a group of people went out to find it. Yeah. <laughs> they went out to find Joyland. They were looking for the gate. Yeah. <laughs> they were tracing through the woods in there. Yeah. <laughs> And they published all this stuff about searching for Joyland. It's like hunting for Bigfoot. Uh, remember uh, Byron King's dealership on Orange Avenue? Sonny King? Yes, sir. Remember Sonny King's Orange View? Anybody know what his claim to fame was? Hmm. He was a speedboat racer. He held three world titles for speedboat. Orange View. Uh, let's see. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Just about the mayors, you mentioned something about the three that were the longest living, or was it the three that died in office? Oh, who, who were they that died in office? Paramore, Sperry, and Carr. Mm -hmm. Not they don't figure in the longest term, so except for Paramore. You know who's going to be well in about a year and a half the longest serving mayor. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm second right now. Yeah. <laughs> so what 
building are we going to name Hester? <laughs> <laughs> only if he dies in office. Not only if he dies in office. <laughs> oh, I don't know. See, our class is for everybody. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, we've kind of changed that because now we've got, you know, Bill Frederick Park at Turkey Lake. Bill Frederick's still kicking. Uh, another neat thing about Turkey Lake, let's go to that. Turkey Lake Ranch. Anybody remember Turkey Lake Ranch? Guess who was president of Turkey Lake Ranch? L.B. McLeod. Oh. All right. L.B. We all knew him as L.B. For a free tour at Greenwood next month, <laughs> can anybody tell me what L.B. stood for? Lucius Bonner McLeod. How cool. Now, that is a rancher name. That is a rancher name, Lucius. So, Lucius was president of Turkey Lake Ranch, which the city needed land to build a, a treatment plant. So the Turkey Lake Ranch covered what we now know as Valencia West campus, part of Metro West. What was Metro West before it was Metro West? Do you remember that? Deborah. 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 That, 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 that was the name of Project. Project Deborah. Project Deborah. Yeah. That was the name of Metro West before it became Metro West was Project Deborah. Uh, but L.B. McLeod donated 80 acres of land to the city to put that thing. So they named L.B. McLeod Road after him. Now also, Turkey Lake, that big beautiful lake we got right there. You know it's man-made? It's a man-made lake. They actually needed the dirt for the field when they built I-4. So that's where they took it from. And they made the lake out of that. How we doing on time? Ooh, man. Uh, let's see. Thomas Jefferson. Oh, there you go. Thank you. I squirrel for a minute. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, big connection to Orlando. Now, Thomas Jefferson's grandson, Francis Epps. Now, Francis Epps was born at Monticello. He was born to Thomas Jefferson's daughter. Thomas Jefferson's daughter died when he was three. So he was raised by his grandfather on his grandfather's estate in Virginia. So he was raised by the President of the United States. Now, when his grandfather died, he left Virginia and went to Tallahassee. At Tallahassee, he became mayor of Tallahassee. He founded the first Episcopal church in Tallahassee. And he actually founded a girls' school in Tallahassee. Florida State School for Women, which is now Florida State University. Okay? So Francis Epps, his grandfather, founded the University of Virginia. But Epps did not go there because Epps, Virginia, University of Virginia wasn't founded yet when Epps went to school. So Epps, when he left Tallahassee, he came to Orlando. So Francis Epps came to Orlando. He settled on this little lake called Lake Oadine. And he changed it to Lake Pinelock. Mm -hmm. So Lake Pinelock was Lake I uh, Oadine, I guess you pronounce it. Now, back there, Lake Pinelock is based off of his estate that he had at 3000 South Osceola, which was owned by uh, Irby Pugh, which Irby Pugh was a great guy. I love talking to him. But the house at 3000 South Osceola, his name, Pine Hill. So now, he also founded the first Episcopal church in Orlando. It's still there today. It's St. James Cathedral. Wow. It was founded by Francis X. So we have that connection, and that's Jefferson, how it was put in Orlando. Now, also, the Jeffersons, or the Epps, married into the Shines. So we have Shine Avenue, Big Tom Shine, Shine Garden. Now, the Shines actually had the first indoor plumbing in Orlando, too. So they had the first indoor plumbing in Orlando. They're very well to do. But also a unique thing, the connection to them, is with the Epps and the Shines, is their daughter, the DAR chapter in St. Augustine. It's the Maria Epstein, it's the daughter, it's named there, and they're all buried at Greenwood. <coughs> so when you go to the downtown streets, Jefferson is actually named after Epps' grandfather, Thomas Jefferson. Another thing is, where do you think the house sat? Main Street, which is now Magnolia, and Jefferson. Oh, wow. Sat right there at the corner. First house with indoor plumbing is gone now, of course. Uh, largest street in Orlando, turn of the century? Gertrude. 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 Where was that? 
Actually, we now know it is Huey. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> if you think about it now, we still have Gertrude's Walk, which is a little sidewalk that runs through there. It's named after Gertrude Sweet. What's her name? She was known as the prettiest woman in Orlando of her day. Uh, that was Mayor Sweet's sister. Actually, had a Mayor Sweet. Uh, so, you know, it's these little tidbits on that. But we're out of time. Yes, ma'am? Uh, are you going to tell us about the night uh, tour through the cemetery or something like that? You want me to tell you about that? Yeah. Yes. I would love telling yes. you about that. Good. I'm so glad uh, that. I do a tour at Greenwood Cemetery once a month. It's uh, Friday closest to the full moon. Uh, you can go on our website, which is greenwood-cemetery.net. There's no A in cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> So, remember, cemeteries are eerie, not scary. Remember that? There's no way in cemetery. But if you go to greenwood-cemetery.net, we have our reservations. We are booked for next month. Uh, but I believe May 1st is the next one. Uh, and just let us know. They book pretty quick because they're free. And it's Friday night, so it's something to do. And, uh, but, you know, I welcome everybody out. We learn a little bit of tidbits as we go through. Kind of like this. It doesn't run in, you know, in order. It's just ADD tour by Donna. Mm -hmm.